Trash to treasure, converting this to this in one day build. This is what I bought, a very cheap Sterling engine, and I decided to assemble it and then disassemble it and rebuild it. Starting by replacing the stamped metal flywheel, notice it's just a press fit onto the little motor there that is actually used as a dual shaft bearing. The motor is just a bearing, it's not used as a motor or generator at all in this. So standard practice, just blew up a piece of scrap metal here and uh, using my new scribing tool that I just made in a few videos ago. I'm going to just draw this out and then cut it out on a bandsaw so that I can get it ready to go on the lathe and turn it down. There it is turned, cut down on the from the bandsaw. I put a big bolt through that um, circular piece of aluminum, as you'll see here. That's a number 1032 with a nut on it. So then if I tighten it down on the collet, it'll be secure in the collet. It's just a matter of tidying up the outside edge. And surfacing the outside surface. And this is the small separate flywheel on the other cam. So I'm finishing out the edge as before. surfacing these outsides. So now I'm looking at how this thing works. There's this little hose that connects what is obviously a hacked off syringe to the other uh, cylinder, the hot cylinder. This is the cold cylinder. And this clever little arrangement with a pin that's captive in a couple of little hooks. So you can see as the pin goes in there and jam fits right into those little hooks. It kind of snaps in. Same thing on the hot cylinder. It just snaps into those little hooks. Kind of clever actually. So now I've decided to use a little 256 bolt instead of the pin on the original. So I'm going to drill and tap that in there. First I have to establish center here. So i am done that in my DRO and now I'm moving off to the prescribed dimension for the original design. And uh, center drilling. And tap drilling and tapping with a 256 tap. So that's those two made. Now they have these little wire uh, piston rods here, I suppose you'd call them. So I've just, I'm going to make them out of pieces of brass. So I've got this one chucked up in the mill and I'm just going to do a center drill on the first hole and then move over to the dimension called out on my DRO. Get that dialed in. So to drill that one. These two holes are different sizes. Uh, this one is for the 256 bolt and the other one will be for the little pin shaft that goes onto the cylinder. So this is the 256 clearance hole, which is just fine. And this is the other one. Just snipping off those lengths. And I'm using my little belt sander here to round over the edges. A little scotch bright to clean them up. So here's the old flywheels and the new ones. 
I was originally thinking of using ball bearings, but then I decided I wanted to use uh, some nice pieces of half-inch brass drilled perfectly for the diameter of the shaft. So I'm going to make a wood base for this. I've decided to go all wood. This is a nice piece of highly finished maple that I got from the big box hardware store nearby. So I'm cutting it down into all the requisite small parts. There's one large piece for the base and then three vertical sections to support the various bearings. So I'm cutting these down and making them small very carefully. I know this is a tricky cut to do on a table saw. Probably should have used my sled, but I'm just used to working with that close with the table saw. So now I'm center finding, or edge finding rather, to find the centering for the hole that will go through this uh, block. This block will be the replacement for the motor bearing support. So there's going to be a shaft that goes all the way through there, and those uh, brass bushings will go in on each side. There's the brass bushing here. So I'm just double checking my dimensions. That's about 3 8 in that dimension and half inch in that dimension because that was the stock dimension. So I'm using a half inch Forstner bit here to drop that into the wood. It's always interesting to use a mill working with wood. It's not what you would expect, but it works great. One thing I have to remember is to spin up the mill really fast for a Forstner bit because they prefer to work with a high speed. So now I'm flipping the block over and using a parallel on the left side of the jaws there to make sure it hits right there in the same reference as the original setup. And drilling in the half inch hole. I'm using my shock vac now to clear all those shavings to prevent them getting all over my machine. So now I'm looking at the shaft clearance and I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole. That's a uh, 3 16 inch shaft. So I'll have nice clearance through all the way through the block for the shaft. I have to keep stopping to clear the chips out of that Forstner bit. So there it is, fits in nicely. I wanted it to show just a little bit proud there, and that's just the way I want it. Now I'm going to use my uh, router bit to bevel off all the corners of these blocks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So back to looking at the dimensions of the syringes here, the, the main cylinders. So that's a little over three quarter, and that is about 5.99. It's, it's bigger than a half inch. So I'm going to start by drilling holes that are um, three quarter and half inch. This is the half inch hole in the one block that will support the smaller uh, flywheel. And now I'm going to chuck it up on my lathe in the four-jaw chuck. Yes, I know, this is weird to, to chuck up a piece of wood on a four-jaw chuck on the lathe. But I used my centering, uh, live center there, to get it centered. And now, as you can see, I'm backing off my boring bar just a little bit. And I'm going to make my first pass through there, clean that out. I'm using a motorized carriage. So I get a nice, clean, consistent cut there. So back that out of the way, and let's check to see fit. Okay, probably go another couple of thou. Yep, backing that out a few thou, and another pass. Let's see how that looks. That's great. That's loose enough now that I can tighten it later. So I'm going to put some bolts all the way through here with a nut that will be embedded in the wood. It'll go right in there. So that's my next step. I'm going to do that on the drill press. Just drill through a clearance hole first. And then the Forstner bit for the clearance for the head. And that will also be the same size for the nut on the other side that I will get squished in there, as you'll see now. Pushing the bolt in there. So now I'm going to use my wrench to torque that nut down into the wood. You can see it pulling in. It's a nice press fit. And then I'll cut that bolt head down. 
Yep, that's right in there. Now, interesting side note here, um, I made that arbor for slitting saws a while ago on my mini lathe, but then I just found these little slitting saws at Harbor Freight. It's a nice little set, very inexpensive. So I've decided to give it a try to make the slit that will close up uh, when the bolt tightens down to close it up around the glass uh, cylinder. So see what's happening there, as I push in, it stalls because the screw that holds the slitting saw in is just not, you can't tighten it enough. So I'm just going very gently and from here on out I'm going to go time-lapse so you can see it really quickly. Um, but I got it to work, which is kind of neat. They're, they're nice little slitting saws and they can come in handy. Finishing the wood with shellac, I'm just going to take a cotton ball and wrap it in a paper towel and then I can just dip it in the shellac and wipe it on. Shellac is completely non-toxic. It's just made from some kind of beetle, a, a lac beetle, I believe, and alcohol. That's it. And the alcohol dries very, very quickly. I mean, in minutes. So I can wipe on a coat very easily, very quickly, not worrying about toxicity, and then come back and wipe another coat on minutes later. Typically, a woodworker doing furniture might put five or six coats on. Today, I'm just going to do two coats. So I'm going to jump to a bit of a time lapse so you can see me working through the whole process of uh, shellacking the whole thing. Um, but you'll see that later in the process here, I go right into a second coat, just continuing through the whole process of coating one coat and then another coat. I'm going to link below to a video that Stumpy Nubs did about the virtues of shellac because it's, it's a darn nice finish. It's one that's been overlooked by woodworkers for a while, but it's a traditional finish that has been used for decades. So now to final assembly and testing and uh, there was a lot of fitting and refitting and experimentation. Uh, this is the main bearing that replaces the motor and my shaft is longer than it needs to be right now because I haven't figured out how long it needs to be. But the parts are fitting on there fairly well. These are the bolts that go together and cinch together to hold the, the glass tubes on. So that uh, they're, they're cut down to length as you can see. I'm sparing you the details of some of the final assembly and tweaking. So here it is with the flame going and yes, it runs great. Mm -hmm. 